Um, so this is a static equilibrium demonstration uh, where we have hanging masses. Uh, the center mass is a 500 gram mass. Uh, the mass over to this side is 400 grams. And the mass on this far side here is 200 grams. Uh, and so the object will hang in equilibrium. Uh, certainly then the tension in this side of the string here is determined by this weight. The tension in this side of the string is determined by this weight. And then the vertical components of the tension on this center mass are balanced by the weight of the center mass. And the horizontal tensions must cancel out. Uh, because there's more mass on this side, then this tension will be larger than this, and therefore this uh, string will be more vertical than this string is. Uh, one can use the sum of the forces in X and the sum of the forces in Y at this point to illustrate the static equilibrium at this point. Uh, using a protractor, then we can demonstrate to the students roughly what those angles are. Right. In this particular case, it should be about 40 degrees uh, towards the right and about 67 or so degrees towards the left. We can also demonstrate from this same setup that by adding mass to one side or the other, that the equilibrium angle will change. And in particular, if I make the masses on both sides equal, then we can see that the, the V shape here is symmetric, both left and right. In order to make use of that static equilibrium demo, then we would still need to do some board work. And the board work, in this case, would involve drawing the free body diagrams for the three sections, the mass to the left, the mass to the right, and then the knot in the middle supporting the third mass. Uh, from the two outside masses, then we can come up with the tensions. And from the middle one, then we actually know the three tensions. It's really the two angles that we don't know. Uh, once we, from diagram B then, there's really two ways we can go about demonstrating it to the students. Either one can sum up the forces in x to determine the net force 0 in x, sum of the forces in y to determine that force is 0 in y. Uh, that would involve doing simultaneous solutions uh, for these two equations. The caveat here is that to really solve this, you'll need to square these two equations judiciously and use the fact that cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. Or the second way that one can do it is to actually generate a force triangle based on those three force vectors and use the law of cosines. This works out more simply, but it does involve more explanation. This is more involved board-wise. You'd have to do some extra work. Um, and some students find that a little confusing. But ultimately, you'd be able to come up with the two angles that we demonstrated with the protractor.